Hello, everybody! This is Alice the Dragon, here with another episode of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. And I am so glad that our doll still has the head we, uh, we chose a while back. Uh, once again, we are here, back at the beginning. But, you know what? That's alright. We've we've learned some things along the way. Uh, I can't exactly remember what we learned, but yeah, we learned something, I'm sure. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with dodging and fighting this time. Oh yeah, it's... Uh, not to wield the thing that you're weakest in when going into the orcish mines. <laughs> uh, yep, but I'm sure that we'll be able to get a bit deeper this time. It just takes a bit of, a bit of caution and a bit of luck. And a lot of luck. Uh, I don't know why, but for some reason, uh, I've been thinking about the Marx Brothers all day. I, I think it's because I heard on, uh, I think it was on uh, NPR that I was listening to, um, and it was like, you know, so-and-so is, uh, you know, taking this lost Marx Brothers script and, uh, putting it, uh, putting it out there. And I'm just, uh, I'm excited about that. If, if you've never seen the Marx Brothers, like, the Mar the Marx Brothers, I think, appeals to an audience that really enjoys black and white and just absurd comedy. Because that is what the Marx Brothers bread and butter butter is. Yeah, of course Harpo's my favorite, and he never speaks in in the films, and instead he uh, will just be so expressive and uh, and use things like horns, and uh, he'll put his leg up in another person's hand and just have them hold it and, and ooh, glowing boots. But yeah, I highly recommend that everybody watch some sort of uh, flying boots. These are flying boots and they're purple. Oh, I love them. <laughs> yeah. We are totally flying. So... You know what? I think we deserve we deserve our wings. We have earned our wings with these boots of flying. There we go. All right, let's go find some food. Snake. Stealth skill is level 2, so that's some good progress. And let's see. Come here, Hob. Hobgoblin. Uh, this, at this time next month, I'm going to be uh, going to Alliance Seattle, and I'm excited about that. It's going to be pretty much the last game um, of the year until the fall. So, yeah, I have to find something else to occupy my time. And, uh, hey, you want to come with? Yeah, I thought you would. I thought you did. Yeah. I can talk, I swear. Just sometimes words get jumbled up, and, and, that's, and that's why I like writing most of the time. I uh, have been writing stories ever since I was 10 years old. Uh, I started with... Uh, uh, <laughs> a little story I called David the Dragon, which uh, was the story of this boy who gets turned into a dragon, but nobody can see that he's a dragon, and and it like 
hilarity ensues. Uh, it it was a very typical ten year old, um, like self indulgent fantasy. <laughs> Uh, because at the very end, I actually installed myself as, as a character, and he's like, will you tell my story? And, of course, she gets turned into a dragon, too. Uh, like, the cycle continues, but... <laughs> uh, I wonder if that would ev if that basic plot would ever be worth, like turning into a thing like an actual book <clears throat> I, I personally I much prefer um, the stories that I'm working on right now uh, I am very much into fantasy and science fiction both um, and the the most complicated Ooh, Dithmenos. The most complicated story I've got is that is um, I can I can sum it up as you know tavern girl gets kidnapped is yeah impersonates royalty and is an accomplice accomplice in destroying a nation. That is the plot. And I've got so much planned in between that I'm worried that it's going to turn into a trilogy. <laughs> uh, so let's decide if uh, Dithmenos is uh, the one we want to go for. Dithmenos the Shadowed. Yeah. Followers of Dithmenos gain a strange and otherworldly affinity to the shadows in their environment. This god despises fire, which long ago freed mortals from the tyranny of shadow. Its use is forbidden by worshippers. Dithmenos favors those who would instead destroy sources of fire. Uh, can radiate darkness, step into shadows, bleed smoke... Shadow now sometimes tangibly mimics your actions, which kind of sounds like, um, uh, kind of sounds like mirror, like, uh, Apricana, like, uh, with the, although I guess it's just more like a regular old summoned creature, can transform into a swirling mass of shadows. That'd be interesting. Um, let's hold off for just a moment and see, there's a robe there that I can't wear. Get that snake. Uh, I should tell you about more of my stories because I like talking about my stories. Um, uh, so one of my science fiction stories I like to call Zeno the Moon Man. And I'm not quite sure what exactly is going to happen in the in the story yet, which is why I haven't really uh yeah, started doing a, a full outline or or anything like that. But um yeah, the the character Zeno is only is only a secondary character in this story. He, you know, he's you know the main character's focus, and it, his backstory is uh, amazing. He's actually one of the um, one of the aliens that uh, is uh, in this first contact story. Ooh, okay. Ooh, I gotta ooh. I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. I sped up, but I died. Oh, well. Oh. You want to play again? Let's play again. Alright. And I'm actually going to do something that I... that would be smart to do, which is setting this to waypoint zero. That way, um... you can do things like go home. Yeah, go to zero, and it does that, which is uh, 
potentially useful in the end game when we actually have like the the thing we're looking for the the what is it the <laughs> the amulet of zot i think that's i think that actually is what that is uh, also we don't deserve wings anymore we lost them all right we are just too noisy uh, dodging mm, and fighting you know what? i don't care about stealth anymore maybe we should just go with the first altar we see next time could make for some fun if if I do the first yeah first altar I see, um, ooh level two, on uh, each uh, run, yeah you know, that 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 could uh, yeah you know, that could keep me on my toes. Although this game keeps me on my toes as it is. Oh, what was I talking about? Right, right. I was telling you about Zeno the Moon Man. Okay, so he's one of these um, alien creatures. And technically, like, I, I would call them um, uh, fungoids. Because, yeah, their their bodies are essentially a sectional... Yeah, you know, like mushroom encasing um, a a core that has some sort of brain in it, and I say some sort of brain because these creatures reproduce by essentially um, stealing genes from you know what whatever creatures are roaming around the environment. And just encasing them, you know, like uh, cloning them and encasing the, um, yeah, the the fetus, I guess, in this just, yeah, you know, this this package, uh, and they've got you know tentacle arms and they're they're yeah you know, predators and they're and they're they just they just neat all around creatures, and. Also, they uh, are, you know, their technology is biology. They have perfected, uh, you know, it started with breeding and then they got to just a level where they, where they could, they essentially had their own version, their own biological version of CRISPR. So... Uh, that led to them making these creatures that were essentially um, telepathic, but were also parasites and would be able to be connected to other creatures. Chuck a stone at the lizard, kill him at the first shot. Yes. So, yeah, these you know badass aliens are are just uh, kind of slowly colonizing the universe you know they will colonize asteroids and ooh hello everybody how oh, let's see where's a good spot to go hmm go go around this way Yeah, what I what I like about what I like about Zeno is uh, his story actually starts with uh, his uh, with his mother, who is very very curious about um, the creatures that have developed on the um, the watery world that. Their co their colony is like in the in the Oort cloud. They're beyond Pluto. But you know she is curious about this little blue planet, and wants to see what what's on it. And 
yeah, there there have been expeditions out there before to um, to collect creatures for uh, for example the dinosaurs. There's quite a few dinosaur uh, inhabitants in there, but uh, that's kind of a side plot. <laughs> and uh, she manages to capture a uh, a human. A um, yeah, I was gonna have him be, you know, I was thinking a Mexican uh, gentleman who you know she takes into her colony and. Um, and, uh, you know, steals his genes and, you know, becomes pregnant with Zeno. And when, you know, when he's born, you know, she kind of gives birth right in front of him. And, you know, he's born and he doesn't have, um, he, he, he doesn't have, uh, the, the, Oh, I forgot. I forgot to to mention that they uh, that they uh, mind connect. Uh, they they have these special communication arms, where yeah you know, they'll touch them to each other, and you know they'll eventually you know grow more if uh, you know if if uh, they're connecting to others quite quite frequently. But he was born without one, which in in her society, that's essentially akin to yeah, a, a, a grave. Hello, Sifmuna. Well, if I wanted to go after the first altar I was uh, encountering, I guess this is it. Uh, we're going to have to go into spell casting. Uh, but, uh, oh yeah, we'll get gifts of books. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try being a spellcaster. Alright. So, yeah, she's, she's about to, she's about to kill Zeno, because, yeah, he's defective and shouldn't be in the gene pool that's the logic and he just uh, runs up and and uh eh, ruined whip not really he he runs up and takes Zeno and uh and uh, just kind of starts uh experimenting and uh almost raising him like a baby because he is a baby he's he's like he's got a little baby brain in there and you know reacts yeah you know, in in similar ways he at at that point he only has the one arm that can actually grab onto stuff but uh yeah you know, after a while, you know, the, you know, the, the mother eventually gets him, uh, to connect with her and, uh, with, or, uh, sorry, connect with Zeno so that she can train him. And, uh, he effectively becomes the translator, um, uh, between his mother and father. And, um, and you know they both find out that you know he's of course very lonely wants to go back to earth so you know she, yeah she uh you would say um uh, it was particularly sympathetic yeah for one of her kind and uh so she decides to send him back to earth and when she does that, she's discovered, and and things don't end up well for her. They essentially tear off all all of her arms and dump her in the garbage pit. So, yeah, that's a lovely bit of trauma in uh, Zeno's life that you know 
is going to affect him as you know affect him as the story goes on uh especially uh since you know the reason why he goes to earth which um is a forbidden planet because obviously the dominant species on there is deranged and dangerous so uh, so yeah he steals a colony seed ooh i'm confused ah dang it come on that that was haste which is enough okay okay we're good now i can continue my story <laughs> so you know being traumatized by losing both his mother and his father um yeah he eventually decides you know he's going to steal a colony seed and um go to earth and try to find his father yeah who he calls papa and uh and uh he gets in contact with the main character uh, character of our story <laughs> after he set up uh a colony you know this, set up the colony seed on the moon and he's like going crazy because he uh auto pickup turns off if you run upstairs and there's some something invisible nearby yes 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 get out of my face i wish i had some spells sif muna i need your help uh Let's see. Let's see. Uh, mutation. Oh, that's all right. Uh, mighty. Clever. Mighty clever. All right. That we survived that. That that's good. That's good. Yeah. He. Uh, yeah. So he is just going stir crazy because yeah gotcha natasha he go he goes stir crazy because you know he's got nobody yeah he he uh yeah he he doesn't connect with his own species and and uh and he's trying to connect with almost his adopted species although technically they're one in the same uh it's it's uh yeah Zeno is a very tender character yeah, yeah he had a rough beginning and he's a pioneer in you know possibly bringing uh humans and aliens together you know <laughs> so you know I, I like i've said i've got some stories that uh that i would like to you know keep working on so that's why i go to writing group every week and uh if you like writing as much as i do i i do recommend uh you find a writing group or just block out an hour or two of your day and just say yeah this is my writing time it's not for anything else except writing and uh it's it's nice although sometimes uh, i get sidetracked and start blogging instead which you know that's that's not such a bad thing either hello natasha uh just get her 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 Ouch. Yep, she died. Er, she, I, I died. She killed me. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I think, I think we've had enough punishment here for tonight. So, uh, thank you for coming along with me on the, the, yeah, this 
you know, a couple of short crawls, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye!